Welcome back to the race coordinator um, race configuration tutorials. Um, the intent of this tutorial this is the second part of the race configuration tutorial, and the intent is still the same. It's to give you a high level overview of all the different properties that compose a race coordinator race. Um, everything from you know the name of the race, what track you're using, to the heat setup, and, and whatnot. Um, in the previous tutorial we left off, we had just finished talking about at a very high level the rotation, so I'm going to continue um, from there moving on to basically heat scoring. Um, just a reminder, this tutorial will not set up any race, this tutorial will not actually use any of these properties. I'm just going to talk about them one at a time, again at a fairly high level. Um, there will be future tutorials which will set up specific race formats and in tutorials that are designed in, you know, specifically to talk about some of these different uh, properties. Um, ideally in the end we'll have a tutorial that at least hits every single property and explains exactly why I'm setting it and what I'm doing. Um, but for now, we're going to talk high level so you can understand all of the different configuration options you have within Race Coordinator for a race. Um, so without hesitation, without any more comment, we're going to move right on to the heat scoring um, property. Race Coordinator allows you to score a heat in one of three different ways. Um, by default, it'll score heat by lap count. So the more times you cross the start-finish line, um, the higher your score, and therefore the better you do. Um, but it will also allow you to score heat by fastest lap or total lap time. Um, fastest lap is simply what time did you cross the start-finish line uh, for that particular lap? Was it better than your previous one? If so, that's your fastest lap. Um, total time is the accumulation of every lap you've obtained um, as, a t as a time added all together. So if you do five 10-second laps, that'll be 50 seconds of total time. Obviously, the lower the time, the, the winner. Um, Heat scoring goes hand in hand with the finish method, the next two properties, finish method and allow finish. Um, so let's start talking about those real quick and we'll come back to heat scoring to explain a little bit more. Um, race quarter allows you to finish a heat in two different ways. Um, you can do a time limited heat, um, which is the default behavior. Um, a time limited heat by default will finish in 180 seconds or three minutes. Um, but you can also set up a lap limited heat in which um, the drivers have to, cr any one driver has to cross the start finish line whatever lap number of times you've set up. So um, I believe by default it's like 15, yeah. So um, the first driver that crosses the 15th lap, if you use the default values, ends the heat, and then all the scoring is accumulated from there as if the heat had ended and everybody had done their thing. Um, before I go back and talk about all three of these properties at once, let's talk about the allow finish method, uh, property for first. Um, the allow finish property is a third property for how the how the heat ends. Um, this property defaults to off, which means you don't allow the other drivers to finish the uh, their their final lap. Um, in this particular, if you turn it on, every driver will be allowed to to finish one last lap, the last lap they're on. Um, if they finish more than one lap before all the drivers finish that final lap because there's a massive crash, somebody's really slow, whatever, any subsequent laps will just be ignored. It'll be as if they are just doing lap, you know, victory laps or whatever. Um, so now let's talk about all three of these properties um, in conjunction with each other. So there are, you can use any combination of these um, properties. However, some of them make more sense than others. Um, specifically, if you're using a... Um, if you're going to do heat scoring that that does total time, for example, the accumulation of all the lap times in a heat, it makes a whole lot of sense to do a finish method that is lap based. So you're going to want to accumulate the total time that it takes drivers to get 10 laps or 12 laps or 15. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do a time limited race because when the time comes up, that'll just end the heat and if you set this for three minutes, the total time will be very close to three minutes, and so what good, did you, you know, why are you really totaling up the time? Um, likewise, if you're doing a total time race, it makes a whole lot of sense to do the allow finish. In fact, I would say it's almost required that you do it, because if you don't, somebody with a really long final lap, that last lap will pretty much get dry, it'll get dropped because it never completed, so race coordinator doesn't know how long it took, and if that happens, it has no way to accumulate it, and so you'll have that one last really long lap time dropped off of your total time, and therefore you could win the race simply because it didn't accumulate that last value. But if you do allow finish, the race, the heat doesn't end until every driver completes that last lap, 
if that happens, obviously the last driver to finish that final lap, they'll have less total laps, but they will have more total time, um, if that makes sense. I mean, you really take a, take a thought about it, think about it. If you want to mess around with it, fool around with it for sure, but that's what's pretty much going to happen. Um, fastest lap is another one of those ones where um, if you're going to if you're going to score the heat by fastest lap time, in this case, you could use really anything you want. Um, typically, I would say allow finish is something you wouldn't use there. Um, the finish method could be time based or lap based. Maybe you want to you want to take the fastest lap of ten laps, so you would do it lap limit lap limited. Excuse me. Um, but again, you can do whatever you want. If you like the way it's configured, by all means, all yours. I'm just suggesting how common common uses of these things would be. Um, you know, some of these things go better with heat, different heat rotations as well. Um, specifically, um, if you're doing fastest lap, um, single lane, single lane solo, single lane solo, any lane are a good good rotation type. Simply because um, y you can consider it a time trial, and you don't want to be messed up by somebody else on the track. But again do whatever you want. You could use round robin on those. You could do, you know, pick it. It's all completely up to you. Um, so th those are the scoring methods there for, for heats. Um, I want to talk about drift time for a second because that does affect um, the final, the finishing of a race as, or heat as well. Excuse me. Excuse me. Drift time is a new property to our to race coordinator, fairly new anyways. Um, it defaults to zero because the original versions of race coordinator did not have this feature and I didn't want to impose it on anybody that had already, already had things set up. However, drift time is the amount of time after the heat ends that race coordinator will still count laps if a driver crosses the start-finish line. And this is very useful because, as you know, when power gets cut off or drivers come off the throttle, cars don't stop instantly depending on the car setup. Um, certainly the cars I run don't. I would imagine um, you know, non-magnet cars probably drift even more. Um, this is the amount of time in seconds that race coordinator will allow to tick off before it will stop counting laps. So even after the, the, the heat ends, if this is set to five seconds, let's say, a car has five seconds to go under that start-finish line. Now, you, you want to keep this value as low as possible because you don't want somebody placing the car back at the start-finish line for the next heat and trigger a lap, but you want, it as high, you want it as high as possible so that there's no confusion as to whether or not the car actually went under the start-finish line at the end of the heat or not. Um, so it's it's you know it's a somewhat tricky one. One two three seconds is probably more than enough. Um, and then if everybody's aware of that and stays clear of the start finish line until that that time, you'll be fine. Heat callouts. Um, race coordinator will allow audio callouts um, based on either lap count or um, based on basically the finish method. Um, whether it's a, a time based race, a heat rather, um, or a uh, lap based heat um, uh, finishing method. Um, and so what you can do is you can add callouts at, you know, um, if it's time-based, when there's 10 seconds to go, when there's 15 seconds to go, 20, whatever your heart, you know, whatever your heart desires, you can set it up. Race coordinator comes with a default set of callouts for that exact purpose. You can create your own and, and add them in as you want. Um, the trick with this property, one thing we found, and it's in the tips, is that um, if you want to say 10 seconds left in the heat, Sometimes it's better to start that sound playing at 11 or 12 seconds, even though so that's slightly early technically. But when the driver hears that, if they're going to go look up at the screen, by the time they look up at the screen after hearing it, it is it will be around the time that it's actually calling out, and so it's a little less confusing. In fact, the default database that Race Coordinator comes with sets up the heat call the heat callouts exactly that way. It sets them up so that they come out a little bit early. So that when you look up to look at the, uh, the the race day screen and see the lap counts and things like that, you actually see that it's at the time that it's calling out instead of somewhat later. Um, piece of cake, set them up, just go crazy. Um, auto advance is another feature of race coordinator. Well, you know what, we're running out of time, so let's stop here for now. Um, we'll do another at least one or two tutorials to talk about the rest of these properties. Um, thanks a lot.